Hey there guys, and uh, this uh, video will be introducing to you the concept of a ball valve and how it works. So here in Fusion 360 I have modeled a ball valve um, with all its various components and I'm going to show you what it would look like inside. So if we go to our analysis here, it will cut through and we can see inside. So what we're looking at here are the various components that um, make up our ball valve. Now, uh, we can't see the handle right now because the handle is in a different location so we will put the ball valve to closed. Go to our joint here, drive this joint and we'll put that to zero degrees. Go to our analysis again. Okay, so the parts of a ball valve. We have the body um, which is what you see from the outside, but inside of the ball valve, surprisingly enough, is a ball. So this is our ball here, and the ball has a hole through the middle. And as you rotate the ball valve, that hole will either be parallel to the flow of water or perpendicular to it. So right now, our valve is open. So you can see here, liquid could flow through. We have threads on either side. Sometimes you'll have threaded valves, sometimes not. In this case, it's got a thread on it. So we could have a pipe that you can screw in on each end as it is threaded. And once you screw that pipe in, you have a, a watertight connection and your liquid can flow through the pipe here. So around the ball, you see this pink area here. These are seals. So they uh, seal around the ball um, like an O-ring and they uh, stop any liquid that may get up here from being able to get through uh, and around the valve. Uh, when the valve is closed, you're going to have a buildup of pressure, and that liquid is going to be trying to force its way through here. So these um, are quite important, these seals, because they are actually what really stop the water from getting around um, the ball when it's closed. Now, the other parts that we have, we have here the uh, stem. So this is a vertical piece, and you can see it cuts into the ball. If we rotate this a little bit, you'll get a better idea. Um, let's hide the body for now. And turn off the sketches. Okay, so you see here the ball has a cutout in it. If we also hide the stem, there. So the top of the ball has a cutout. I turn off our analysis. You see it there. Okay? So this slot is where our stem fits into. So as our um, stem is rotated, it's going to carry the ball with it. So I've put these together into a rigid group. If this rotates, um, Turn our analysis off. And we'll hide the stem. So as it rotates, we drive this joint. It carries the ball with it as it's sitting inside that slot. Okay? So. Show all of our parts again. Okay, so that's the stem. Um, the stem is held in by the ball and a nut on the top of here. So the stem runs through this area which has a bushing around it. So it's the stem bushing and we have a stem seal. So again, if any liquid was to get up here, um, it's going to be sealed. So it has like an O-ring around here to try and stop liquid from leaking out through the top. Um, and it also serves to reduce wear and tear, make the valve easier to turn, um, and just makes a good tight seal. So that is our stem seal. And then above there, then we have the stem bushing, which kind of holds that seal down in place. Uh, it's basically a washer, and on top of that, 
if we hide the lever, we have a nut, which basically holds the stem in place, like so. You see there? Um, we hide the lever washer, the lever nut, and the sleeve. Okay, so without the lever attached, that's how it would appear. We have our hex on there, and then we have this flat side. Now, that flat side, hide the stem nut. That is what stops the lever from rotating around. If we put the lever on here, you see the lever has a cutout. That is the same shape. And so the lever is basically locked on. We place the lever washer on top, which is a washer that um, fits over the stem, thickens the lever there. And on top of that, we have the lever nut, which holds that in place. And then over the lever, we have a plastic sleeve to make it easy to grab hold of and turn, not so slippy. And here you can see inside the ball valve around the ball, the seals I was talking about. And now if we drive this valve, turn the analysis off. go to our joints we drive this joint now you can see what happens as we close the valve the ball rotates so it is perpendicular or at 90 degrees to the flow of the liquid so you can imagine if we had liquid traveling down this pipe it cannot get through because the ball has closed and no liquid can pass now, as we begin to open up the valve, you see the handle turns. Now, a little bit of liquid will be able to get through. We still have a constriction because we haven't fully opened the valve. And the more we open the valve, the more flow of liquid you're going to be able to get until it's fully opened at 90 degrees. Now, you'll see also we have a stopper here on the top built into the body. There is a physical limiter so that prevents the handle from being able to turn any further than here you'll see the edge of our handle is going to hit this limiter it cannot turn any further and the same in the other direction if we rotate it 90 degrees you'll see we also have a limiter over here so it cannot rotate any more than 90 degrees around its axis so we know that this is fully open we know that here is fully closed so halfway in between 45 degrees would be half open and so on so there is a quick introduction to how a ball valve works what the components are inside and the basic operation I hope you found this tutorial video useful and if you're interested in learning how to draw uh, mechanical parts such as this in uh, software called Fusion 360 then be sure to check out the videos on my YouTube channel that show you exactly how I created this uh, using Autodesk Fusion 360 don't forget to hit subscribe and like the video give it a thumbs up if you found this useful thanks very much for tuning in and I'll see you next time